Good morning, Wenatchee Valley. Good morning, North Central Washington. Back at it for another week. And what a weekend it was. It is Monday, the ninth day of November 2020. I'm Dan Coon. Strub dead gorgeous sunrise going on behind me. It just is now peeking up over the East Wenatchee bench. I'm loving this. Right about this time tomorrow or Wednesday anyway, the sun will be right at the beginning of this program sunrise i should say uh, lots to get to today it's chilly it's cold 23 degrees outside of our studios nothing on afraid of afraid of you're at 14 degrees palisades 18 dryden 22 it's cold out and now we start talking maybe a little bit of snow tomorrow night a little bit tonight maybe the best chance of measurable snow which is not going to last very long tomorrow night here in the North Central Washington area. Forecast details are coming up. We got news to get to, almost all of it COVID related. We're going in the wrong direction in that, uh, that department. Sports, Seahawks. Seahawks, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh well, you can't win them all. Uh, we also have everything else that you need to to start your day. And uh, Dr. Jason Lake will be my guest in the back half of the program. He is the new Chief Medical Officer Confluence Health, uh, replacing the retired Dr. Stu Freed. So we got some important, important information uh, coming your way from Dr. Lake, and we'll have that conversation. We taped it on Friday, going to air it for you today in the back half of the program. Beautiful morning, cold, but beautiful. Let's take our tour around North Central Washington with our Valley View cameras, and let's see what we got today. And that's what we got today. That is gorgeous. Sun is just kissing Birch Mountain. You can see that about your center of your screen and just above the Umi Gardens area. Again, sunrise just about <clears throat> five minutes ago, about 6.57. Sunset tonight, 4.31. That's nine hours and 34 minutes of daylight. Again, a weak system is going to bring light snow tonight into early Tuesday morning. I don't think we're going to really have a great deal of impact there. It's a beautiful morning, but as the day progresses, the clouds will be thickening up as we roll into a new work week. Camera number two, it's Megan's Choice. My guess is she has all kinds of cameras to choose from. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. Um, I don't know, Blag? That's the Lake Wenatchee camera. Oh, by golly, that is. Is that Nanapok Ridge or Coles Corner? That's again, okay, well, <laughs> it's none of those things actually, but it's a beautiful view there. Obviously not enough light yet in that area to have the cameras change from chroma key to color. It has to have enough light and it'll do that automatically. Man, technology is cool. A bit scary at times, but cool. Uh, and by the way, the Cascades are going to get some snow. Now tonight, you're going to get about three to five inches of snow tonight and a couple of inches of snow tomorrow in the Cascades. You're going to be in for winter driving conditions. Big time snow coming into the mountains uh, this weekend. Again, details are coming up. Camera number three. Hello to, that looks to be the monitor camera. The monitor camera pointing towards, uh, I would guess, Kashmir. I'm just spitballing there, but I can see Mount Kashmir and I can see Mount Stewart. Yeah, way off in the distance there, the, the uh, icicle area, the Wenatchee River. Yeah, that's, that's a gorgeous view there. Are we done with the harvest? Are we still got, there can't be any more apples or, or pears on the trees, I'm assuming at this point. Still some pretty spectacular colors, at least here in the Wenatchee Valley. Uh, we still have another maybe week or so of that before the, the, the uh, leaves begin to really start dropping off the trees and the cold overnight lows. And camera number four, we are off to see a large body of water. I'm, I'm thinking that's maybe Bear Mountain. The Bear Mountain camera. Wapato Point is to the right, far off to the right. You can barely make it out. Uh, so we're pointing directly across the river, basically towards the Manson area from our Bear Mountain camera. So Lake Chelan, good morning to you. It's good to see you. Again, everybody's going to be dealing with bountiful sunshine this morning. Then that's going to change as the clouds begin to make their presence felt later on today, but um, and temperatures below normal for sure. We got one slide to show for you and that is your Tuesday snow. As you can see, we're going to have less than an inch if we even get that. Most of the snow is going to be relegated either to the Cascades or to the Idaho Panhandle. A couple of inches of snow possible in the Spokane area. Most of our viewing area, if not all of it, is going to get very 
little snow, but Tuesday morning, depending on how much snow we get, could get a little on the dicey side. But again, most of it's going to be to the east of us. The big time snow is going to be coming up into the uh, higher elevations and especially in the mountain passes. Again, uh, three to five inches of snow expected in the Cascades tonight. A couple of inches, maybe even three inches tomorrow. And then starting on Friday and really lasting all through the weekend, just a quick heads up, it will be heavy snow in the Cascades and in the Idaho Panhandle. So definitely get ready for some winter driving conditions uh, this weekend and a little dicey at times uh, tonight if you're traveling over uh, Stevens, Suquamity, or Blewett Pass. Wanted to give you a heads up on that. Patriot Plumbing Heating and Cooling gives your home a hug. And here's your forecast. Again, as I mentioned, the clouds will be thickening up as the day progresses. We'll top off at about 43 degrees. Snow level at about 1,500 feet this afternoon. Or it should be dry. Now tonight, there's a slight chance of a little bit of light snow. The snow level is going to come down to 1,800 feet. Here on the valley floor, we're at about 750 feet above snow level. So some of the upper elevations uh, around the valley could get some measurable snow, but I don't think we're going to get any kind of accumulation tonight spilling into Tuesday. Tuesday looks to be dry, quite a bit of sunshine and a high of 48 degrees. Overnight low is chilly, below freezing. Wednesday is Veterans Day, no problems at all. Lots of sunshine, high of 48. Things start changing a little bit on Thursday. Now the snow level Thursday is going to drop all the way down to 700 feet, but on the other hand, we really don't have a big chance of precipitation, so I don't think we're going to get any on Thursday or Friday. Friday, the big story is going to be Friday night. Significant snow in the Cascades. We're going to have rain if we get precipitation at all on Friday, on Thursday and Friday, really, for that matter. Saturday, partly cloudy. Again, a little bit of light rain, possibly mixed with a couple of straight snowflakes on Saturday morning. We wrap up the weekend on Sunday with mostly cloudy skies. And again, whatever precipitation we get here on the valley floor is probably going to be in the form of rain, but we can't rule out a snowflake or two, but it's not going to stick around very long, at least here anyway. It is uh, seven minutes after the hour. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have your Monday morning news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. My name is Lacey Haggerty, and I'm a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you'll love having midwifery care. Contractors, furniture makers, and weekend do-it-yourselfers around North Central Washington will tell you that Lombard's Hardwood Supply is the place to get what you need. Lombard's Full Mill Workshop can handle jobs large or small. Lombard's has a full line of interior and exterior doors available, as well as custom barn doors. From alderwood to zebra wood and everything in between, it's Lombard's Hardwood Supply on School Street, in Sunny Slope. Like us on Facebook and check out our monthly special. Just about nine minutes after the hour on this Monday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Kuntz. We have clear skies for the most part, 22 degrees outside of our studios. Increasing clouds today. Highs will be in the lower 40s. Here are your headlines. The Shiline Douglas Health District says COVID-19 cases in the two-county area has surged just like the rest of the country for that matter. Uh, 240 cases per 100,000 members of the population. That's up 74% from last week and far higher than the goal of 25 per 100,000. Four people have died of the coronavirus in the last two weeks. That brings the region's total to 29 mortalities. The health district continues to advise residents to mask up, social distance, and avoid large gatherings. Grant County reported two more COVID-19 deaths late last week. That uh, They were both Moses Lake women, we understand. The Grant County Health District said the women, one in her 70s, the other in her 80s, both had underlying health conditions, and that made them more vulnerable to the virus. That brings the county's total in Grant County, a uh, total, total number of deaths in Grant County now to 27. The local Hispanic community was by far the hardest hit during the early months of the COVID-19 pandemic. But Dr. Malcolm Butler, health officer for the Chelan Douglas Health District, said Thursday that the number of new cases for that group has been falling 
since September. During his weekly video update, Butler said the largest number of new cases in Chelan and Douglas counties are now being seen in males aged 20 to 40. This is an interesting graph that uh, was put together for us this week. It's looking at ages over time. So on the far left is uh, October 1st, on the far right is October 29th. And then the different colored bands there are different age groups. And you can see how the ages have changed over time. This adds up in total to 100%. And what I want you to see is that through the course of the month of October, zero to nine year olds actually have been going down. 10 to 19 year olds have gone up a little bit, but been roughly stable. But look at what's going on in 20 to 29 year olds. Over the last uh, week of October, they really took off. Um, you can also see way up at the top, the um, most elderly um, folks, the numbers have been fairly small throughout the past month. So from our perspective, that's good news. <laughs> This is something that's pretty exciting, I think. This is actually looking at ethnicity over time. Uh, on the left is Chelan County, on the right is Douglas County. Um, on the far left is March, all the way through to the end of October, on the right of each graph. And the light blue are positive cases who described as Hispanic or Latino, and the dark blue are positive cases who described themselves as non-Hispanic. And what you can see is that throughout most of the pandemic, the um, about 80% of the disease has been carried in the Hispanic community. But here, uh, since September, that number has gone down. And now in, um, so you can see it there going down. And now in October, you can see that we're down about 50%, uh, which is dramatic and I think important. And uh, huge kudos to the Hispanic community for whatever changes uh, have been made. Tiffany Gehring has defeated Dale England in the race for Chelan County Commissioner District 3 after the latest numbers from the Chelan County Auditor's Office were released on Friday afternoon. Gehring has 18,051 votes to 17,419 for England with a 632 vote lead and only 483 outstanding ballots left to count. Gehring's lead over England is insurmountable. Gehring is the Chief Operating Officer for the Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce. England is a Manson area orchardist. As America's COVID-19 pandemic enters its second year, the Washington State Capitol will remain closed and its legislature will meet remotely. Majority Democrats in the Senate say when they return to Olympia come January, lawmakers will vote in virtual meetings and conduct hearings by teleconference. Only a few legislators will be allowed on the Senate floor at any given time, members of the Washington State House say proceedings will likely look the same in their chamber. A long time Thanksgiving tradition of generosity and community togetherness in Chelan has been canceled because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The owners of the Apple Cup Cafe said Thursday that the regulations and mandates required just to operate on a day-to-day -day basis has made it impossible to hold their 24th annual community Thanksgiving feed. The dinner attracts as many as 1,500 community members each year for a free Thanksgiving meal. All those people are served in a three-hour period. That means a big and busy gathering of diners and volunteers. Owner Ryan Peterson and his family said they tried to come up with a way to make it work this year, but the pandemic made it impossible. The family vowed to make up for the cancellation in the years to come. The Wenatchee Police Department honored a few of its own with their annual departmental awards. It was held Last week, Officer Albert Gonzalez was named Officer of the Year. He also earned a life-saving award for using CPR and Narcan in the field. Other recipients included Officer Riley Koch for his work with the homeless population and Scott Moen with another life-saving award. Chief Steve Crown gave out the awards in a closed ceremony in the police garage <clears throat> because of COVID-19. Grant PUD's expansion efforts to its wholesale fiber optic network will receive a financial boost thanks to funding from the Washington State Public Works Board. The utility received a $810,000 grant and qualified for an $810,000 loan as part of the Public Works Board's Competitive Construction Grant and Loan Broadband Program. The Grant PUD was one of seven broadband construction projects awarded funding to help bring broadband, broadband internet service to unserved 
and underserved communities across the state. The funding will supplement the estimated $1.8 million in construction costs to expand the network. Construction within the area anticipated to be finished by the end of the year. And that is a look at what's making headlines at 15 minutes after the hour on this Monday. Grant will be happy. He's a Bills fan. Grant Olson previews the Monday Night News. Here's the man. Good Monday morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, expect a cool, wet, and maybe even white work week ahead. I'll have complete details in your North Central Washington weather forecast, and Eric Granstrom will have all the latest from the Seahawks-Bills game yesterday. That and all the day's news coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then, Dan. Thank you, Grant. You have a news tip? You want to drop us a line and say hi? We try and give you all the tools in the Internet Toolbox. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com. If you go to our website, ncwlife.com, you'll see the latest news. And also, you'll see the contact icon at the top of the screen. If you click on it, a form pops up, and it's down the road you go. Or you can go to our Facebook page and drop us a note via Facebook Messenger. All right, 16 minutes after the hour, Seahawks. Sports is next. You're watching Wake Up on Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Hi, I'm Jim Heinlein, independent agent at Springwater Insurance Group. And for next year's plans, there's some really special ones coming out. One in particular has no premium to it. Zero premium. That's pretty neat. Especially if you're a veteran who has TRICARE or VA or CHAMPS VA. Because you can utilize two plans at the same time. If you have questions about this and like more information, give us a call at 888-2600. There are so many possibilities for you to learn local right here at Wenatchee Valley College. Take classes towards a degree or certificate in more than 50 areas of study. Wenatchee Valley College now offers a large variety of virtual classes, including labs, sign language, music, and machining, and they have the resources to help you succeed in virtual classes. So when a college degree is your goal, learn local at Wenatchee Valley College. Eighteen minutes after the hour. This is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I'm Dan Coon. Sports Seahawks. Yeah, yeah, they didn't look very good yesterday. They lost to the Bills, forty-four to thirty-four. The score, well, the score was closer than the game actually was. Russell Wilson sacked five times. He was hit sixteen times. He threw a couple of interceptions. Had a couple of fumbles. Coach Pete Carroll says he had a hard time coming to grips with a game like that. Well, what I would tell you is I, I don't recognize that, that game. We haven't seen like, us look like that. And uh, it's a game that I don't have any place in my brain for it. Um, we really had a hard time in the first half getting started on defense and on offense. And, and uh, they just they made it look easy. And uh, so, um, you know, when you look at the end of the game and you see that you know, they didn't even try to run the football. They just stayed with the throwing game and did a nice job with it. And they completed a ton of passes and all. Um, that's it was just an unusual football game in that regard. Um, we just don't turn the ball over like that, but we did today, and they they capitalized on all of it and and, and just made us pay. So it was a, the kind of game that uh, we're just not used to seeing, and, and we got to make sure and put that behind us and get rolling. Uh, we got a lot of season left. This is the game at the halfway point. Um, really disappointed that that we finished. Whenever we finish anything and we didn't finish it right, uh, it doesn't feel right. And uh, so uh, we got to get back to work and get going. We go right back into the division and all of that, and we got to we have to bounce and, and get back on track. And so we'll see if we can pull that off. Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills offense pretty much had carte blanche to do whatever they wanted to in the first half. They rolled up a 24 to 10 lead. Allen finishing 31 to 38, 415 yards, three touchdowns. Seattle. Well, they sacked him seven times. Jamal Adams made his return to the lineup after missing three games with a groin injury. He said the defense just has to do better. Yeah, we just got to be better, man. We got to get on the same page, continue to communicate. Um, we just got to be, you know, overall better um, as a group. Um, and, and we're going to do that, um, you know, starting Monday, starting, you know, whenever we get back into, into, the, into the building. Um, you know, just had, had a lot of mistakes and, Came out flat, and obviously, you know, playing against a team like the Buffalo Bills, uh, well-coached organization, um, you know, they, they fight, 
and, and you know, obviously I have a lot of history with him. Uh, I knew all about him, and I knew what type of club this was going to be. I knew what type of fight and ball game it was going to be. Um, we started off slow, and obviously, you know, you can't do that versus good teams. So um, we got to be better. Russell Wilson, not a very good day for him. He was 28 for 41, 390 yards. He did throw for two touchdowns, and he had two interceptions. He said, yeah, the game didn't go our way, but we still have half a season left to get better. We just got to be cleaner. You know, we got to be cleaner. We got to be, we got to, we still had a great chance to win the game. Um, despite it all, you know, we were, at one point we were down by seven. Um, you know, balls, I think, around the 50 yard line. Defense gets a sack. You know, they make a call and they get a first down or whatever, and, or I think it was. And, and then the next thing you know, they score. Um, so we had a chance, you know, and um, despite it all, uh, despite that it wasn't our, you know, our best game, obviously, we scored a lot of points. We did a lot of good things in that sense, but we also did some bad things. So we just got to eliminate those things, and I think stay focused on the mission. Uh, the, the reality is Seattle Seahawks are 6-2, and two, um, you know, and uh, we're still in a good position to driver's seat to just still, you know, continue to win and continue to lead and just um, try to find a way to make something, something special happen. DK Metcalf caught seven passes for 108 yards and a touchdown. Seahawks dropped to 6-2. and two. Uh, on the season next Sunday at 125, they'll be in Los Angeles to take on the Rams. He didn't want to talk about it, but it came out in the post-game press conference. Pete Carroll has received a contract extension from the Seahawks. Reportedly, he's agreed to a five-year extension that will keep him as the Seahawks head coach until he's 74 years old. Carroll said nothing was said because, well, they don't really say anything about that in the organization. I don't think we've ever, I think in all the years I've been here, we've never really talked about contracts and, and uh, um, you know, I, I think it, you know, for for a gesture like this from, you know, from Jody Allen and, and the organization and all, um, you know, didn't, at a time when everybody's suffering and struggling and all that, I mean, it was something that has been in the works for a long time. We've been talking about for way before, you know, you know, all the issues that, are, that have happened and, and uh, so it finally came together, um, you know, just didn't feel like it was, we need to be talked about unless we had to, you know, and so that's all. Of course, Pete Carroll is the longest tenured and winning this coach in Seahawks franchise history. All right, to the Les Schwab scoreboard from the NFC West on Thursday night, in case you missed it. Aaron Rodgers threw for 305 yards and four touchdowns to lead the Packers past the 49ers. No problems there, 34 to 17. Despite Kyler Murray's 389 yards combined offense with three touchdowns throwing and one running, Arizona fell to Miami. 34 to 31. Tua Tagliovio completed 20 of 28 passes, 248 yards, two touchdowns to lead the Dolphins. The Rams didn't play. They were off this weekend getting ready for the Seahawks. Seattle, as you can see there, still leads the NFC West despite yesterday's loss in Buffalo. Arizona and Los Angeles tied for second at five and three. San Francisco trails the pack at four and five. All right, Cougars. True freshman Jaden Delora up to the task <clears throat> for Washington State on Saturday. Cougars. Topped Oregon State 38 to 28. <clears throat> the Hawaiian completed 18 of his 33 passes, 277 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and an interception. He also ran for 43 yards and a score in Wazoo's season opener. Dion McIntosh did the damage on the ground, carrying the ball 18 times for 147 yards and a score. Washington State returns home. They'll take on number 11 Oregon in Pullman, 4 o'clock kickoff Saturday on Fox. All right, to the rest of the Pac-12 of the weekend, courtesy of our friends at Les Schwab, Tyler Slough, I'm sorry, Shaw, threw for 227 yards in the score. C.J. Verdell rushed for 105 yards and another score. Oregon gets past Stanford 35 to 14. The Cardinals' place kicker missed four field goals in that game. Kedon Slovis passed for 381 yards and a couple of touchdowns. USC comes from behind. Beats Arizona State 28 to 27. Jake Broussard rushing for 187 yards and three touchdowns. Colorado held off a second half push from UCLA. They beat the Bruins 48 to 42. And of course, Arizona at Utah and the Huskies and the Golden Bears canceled because of COVID-19. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Monday. There is no obscure holiday of the day today. I did my research. I got a lot of different websites I go to. Nothing really jumped out at me. It happens every once in a while. I just don't have one for you today. Sorry. Make up your own obscure holiday. We'll move straight to today in history. Uh, one of the most famous photographs of Theodore Roosevelt ever taken. There he is down at the Panama Canal 
November 9, 1906, 114 years ago today, Theodore Roosevelt becomes the first sitting president of the United States to make an official trip outside the country. He went to go see what was going on with the Panama Canal because he kind of he kind of beat people upside the head to make it happen. There were some questions. Some constitutional scholars and legal people were thinking, can he still legally like sign bills into law and make executive orders and hire and fire people when he's physically not within the confines of the United States of America? And they said, Theodore Roosevelt said, I don't care. I'm going anywhere. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt became the first sitting president of the U.S. to leave the country while president. Uh, the last president to serve an entire term and not leave the country was Herbert Hoover, who stayed within the United States between 1929 and 1933. Every president since FDR has made multiple trips overseas. November 9th, 1923, 97 years ago today, Adolf Hitler, Hermann Goering, Rudolf Hess, and the rest of the gang uh, tried, tried to uh, do a coup, take over the government of Germany, the famous Beer Hall Putsch, which uh, fell flat in his face because uh, the police and governmental troops uh, stopped them from actually doing it. In front of a beer hall packed with thousands of people, Adolf Hitler jumped up on a table, fired a gun into the ceiling, and said the National Revolution has broken out. The hall is surrounded by 600 men. Nobody can leave. Well, the German government and the Germany, German state police said, nah, not, not yet. Anyway, the famous Beer Hall Putsch, which put Hitler's name on the map, he would have his way, unfortunately, about 10 years later after serving time in prison. This is the uh, 55th anniversary of the Great Blackout of 1965. Several states and parts of Canada are hit with a wide blackout, lasted up to 13 hours, the famous New York City blackout of 1965. Now, there was a blackout in 1977, which was in the summertime. There was widespread looting and arson and all kinds of bad things in 1977, but that happened in the heat of the summertime. The 1965 New York City blackout happened in the coolness of fall. In fact, there were very few, there was almost no looting at all in New York City. The biggest problem is they had about 800,000 people trapped in the subways with no place to go and they had about a half a million people trapped in elevators that couldn't get out. <clears throat> One of the great urban legends of the blackout of 1965 is that nine months later, there was a baby boom <clears throat> in New York City. It's exactly that. It's an urban legend. It didn't happen, the blackout of 1965. You ever see the film War Games? Came out in 1983, really good movie. Ali Sheedy and uh, Matthew Broderick. Well, the incident that inspired the movie War Games happened on this date. 41 years ago today, November 9th, 1979, the computers at NORAD and the computers at the Alternate National Military Command Center in Maryland said, oh my goodness, the Soviets have launched a wide-scale thermonuclear attack on the United States, there are missiles coming in from all over the Soviet Union. We're done for. But before anybody could say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's double check this. And they went and double checked the data from the satellites and the early warning radars. And they said, Whew, nope, false alarm. Came close though, came close. Computers, you know, it's scary. Uh, on an entirely different note, say goodbye to the Berlin Wall. This was unbelievable. For those people who remember this, this was a stunning development. The East German government said, nerds to it. We're just going to open up the wall. East Berliners and West Berliners can come and go as they please. Well, West Berliners didn't exactly want to go to East Berlin, but the East Berliners said, yeah, we're in. Bread, milk, butter, cheese. I can't get that stuff in East Berlin. Uh, East Germany opens their checkpoints to the Berlin Wall. Its citizens were allowed to freely travel into West Berlin and the beginning of the end of not only a divided Berlin, but a divided Germany began on this state 31 years ago today, a stunning development. Speaking of uh, good news, 28 years ago today, November 9th, 1992, after posting just one winning season in franchise history, the year before, in 1992, they had posted the worst record in the American League. The Mariners hired Lou Pinella as their new manager. Lou Pinella would manage the Mariners for the next 10 years. 840 wins, 
seven winning seasons, three American League West championships, four playoff appearances. Lou Pinella changed the fortunes of the franchise for a decade or so, and then he left and the Mariners resumed becoming the Mariners. All four playoff appearances by the Mariners under the management of skipper Lou Pinella, who was hired on the state back in 1992. Birthdays, my all time favorite vice president. There he is, Sparrow T. Agnew, the 39th vice president of the United States. <clears throat> Born in the state 102 years ago today, he was Richard Nixon's law and order vice president. He hated the mainstream media. He hated protests and social unrest and change. Law and order, law and order, Spiro T. Agnew. Of course, in the meantime, uh, he was, uh, let's see, tax fraud, extortion, bribery, kickbacks, criminal conspiracy. Uh, while he was the governor of Maryland, before he was the vice president, he took kickbacks from the contractors. And then he became vice president and said, I don't want to give up my kickbacks. I've got a swanky lifestyle here. So he kept taking kickbacks uh, as vice president. Finally, he pled no contest to a single felony charge of tax evasion, resigned from office, and disappeared. Spiro T. Agnew. Oh, we miss him. Born in the state in 1918. We just lost Bob Gibson, of course, last month at the age of 84. The great Bob Gibson, born in the state of 1935. 17 seasons with the St. Louis Cardinals, 251 wins, 3,117 strikeouts, a lifetime ERA of 2.91. His ERA in 1968, 1.123, a stunning number. Two times a world champion, inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1981, and one of the greatest right-hand pitchers of all time, the great Gibby. Bob Gibson. We miss Bob. 32 minutes after the hour. Mike McNaughty's got an opinion. And then I finally got a chance to sit down with the brand new chief medical officer of Confluence Health. His name is Dr. Jason Lake, and he's going to talk all things Confluence Health when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Green Motion e-bikes have rolled into Wenatchee. We've got fun, affordable e-bikes for the whole family. Portable e-bikes that fit right in the trunk of your car. Fat tire mountain bikes plus unique vintage style bikes you won't find anywhere else. Get some exercise with pedal assist or just cruise up to 20 miles per hour with the throttle. Starting under $1,000, Green Motion e-bikes are affordable fun for the whole family. It became painfully clear that it was time for a new hot water heater. So found there are two different kinds of water heaters on the market today. There's the old kind, and now they have a new one. It's a heat pump water heater. It's considerably more energy efficient, but it costs a lot more. That's when we discovered that the Chelan County PUD was giving $800 rebates for the heat pump water heater. Now, they're basically the same cost. It only took me a couple of minutes to fill it out, and about six weeks later, I got a check back. Pretty cool. North Central Washington. I'm Dave Tosh, Executive Director, Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center, and I'm excited to announce a new variety show entitled Vibrant Living, brought to you by the Senior Center. And I think you'll find it educational, informative, and a lot of fun. Join us in early November for the new program, Vibrant Living. Dog McNaughty, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. So, when I go into a retail store, I choose my items that I want to purchase, I bring them to the checkout stand, prepared to pay. And lo and behold, there at the cash register is a tip jar. A tip jar? What am I tipping this employee for? For taking my money and accurately reading what the cash register says my change is? 
Now, tipping is getting tipping is getting way out of hands, folks. I, I I can and do understand tipping food service folks, and I regularly tip 20 percent or more. I really do, and I tip cab and Uber drivers and folks who deliver food to my house. I also tip baristas because honestly, my daughter used to be one. But a tip jar at a retail establishment. I, I can just imagine the next time I go into my local hardware store, pick up my light bulbs and a screwdriver that I need, and when I go to pay, there's going to be a tip jar on the counter. Sorry, ain't going to have none of my money in it. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. Currently, Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is open for dine-in and take-out. Owner Justin Hefner and his staff are just as excited as you to get back to their regularly scheduled full menu, music, and poker. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is serving a limited menu for lunch and dinner, dine-in, or take-out. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. Dr. Wayne Latimer's Integrative Chiropractic Clinic and Rehab now offers more services. If you've been injured on the job, in an auto accident, have a sports injury, call today and try his wraparound services. Latimer Chiropractic Clinic has added a physician's assistant and a naturopath to their medical lineup. From needing stress relief from a busy life to looking at core health issues, stop by Latimer's Integrative Chiropractic Clinic on Mission, where they are committed to doing more so you can too. Mary Maids of Wenatchee believes a clean home is a happy home. Mary Maids provides holiday cleaning services to cheer about. Don't let the seasonal cleaning ruin the festive fun. Mary Maids can simplify your life at a great value. It's never too soon to start planning a holiday perfect home. Mary Maids of Wenatchee happily offers a worry-free guarantee. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Call Mary Maids today. Winter is a great time to trade in your current hot tub. Turn your old hot tub into money with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa's trade-in program. You can save $500 to $1,000 off of any new Artesian Spa or take advantage of a free Bluetooth music experience. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa recommends draining your hot tub every three months. Ask us about our drain and refill special. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. We're back on Wake Up with Anchee Valley. Once a month, our friends from Confluence Health drops by and gives us the latest news uh, in the ever-widening world of health care. Obviously, in this COVID day and age, it's been on the front page of everybody's mind. But this is no normal visit uh, with our friends at Confluence Health. We actually have the gentleman who is the new chief medical officer of that fine organization, took over from uh, Stu Freed uh, a few months ago. Dr. Jason Lake is my guest, and it's good to have you here on the program finally. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you. Uh, you stepped into a hornet's nest, my friend, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. But first, since you're a first-timer, give folks a little uh, Jason Lake 101, a little brief biographical sketch, if you don't mind. Yeah, so I was born near Buffalo, New York, and uh, went to medical school in Buffalo, New York, and ultimately did training in internal medicine and gastroenterology in the United States Army at Walter Reed Army Medical Center and I was proud to serve there for 11 years um, and then I came to Wenatchee and, and served in the gastroenterology department for several years and, and ultimately took over for Stu Freed more recently as the chief medical officer. And how did that process work because this is a it's a terribly important job it's a very high profile job no question about it but when Stu started making feelers that I'm ready to maybe step aside from my duties was it an, uh, like everybody applies were you approached how did that whole thing come to be doc yeah it was a very uh thorough process so uh they identified the fact that Stu wanted to retire all the way back in 2017 and there was an application process um, and there were several finalists selected and then we went through kind of a trial period um, where we shadowed Dr. Freed and uh, and then they finally selected me as his replacement so it was ultimately took a couple of years to get through that process and I'm really happy to be selected. But you were vetted you have the job and what exactly does being the chief medical officer entail? Really, the chief medical officer is uh, is responsible for the entirety of the care that we deliver through Confluence Health. You know, we 
pride ourselves on delivering high quality care throughout North Central Washington. Um, and that's really my responsibility to help make that happen and, and try to um, figure out new ways to take better care of our patients all throughout the region. Um, in the more recent past, you know, I've uh, really helped kind of navigate through the COVID experience um, so that we could uh, take great care of our COVID patients while also trying to take care of the rest of the patients that we serve as well. So it's a, it's a pretty um, all-encompassing job. How did we in the North Central Washington area get so lucky to have so many outstanding physicians and nurses and healthcare professionals land here? Because, I mean, we do. We got some top flight talent here. Yeah, Wenatchee kind of has um, the secret sauce. We have um, one, a beautiful region to live in and a region where people love to come and recreate. That's why a lot of us come here. Um, but equally important, we have uh, a health system that is very unique. Um, we have a relatively small town, but we serve a wide geographic area. Um, and that allows us to bring a concentration of specialists and surgeons um, into this area that we otherwise could never draw into a, a, a city of 70,000 or so. Um, so it's really that, um, that confluence of things that allows us to, to um, bring top, top quality physicians and providers to our area. And is that what brought you here to begin with? Uh, it is. Yeah. You know, um, this was the very last place that I interviewed and, uh, and, I, and my family and I spent a week out here um, and every day we spent more time in the community, we spent more time interacting um, in the health system and we realized that this is not just a great place to practice medicine, it's a great place to raise our family. I actually interviewed uh, the lovely young lady whose job it is to recruit medical professionals to move to Wenatchee, and she said it's the easiest job I've ever had in my right. life. So. <laughs> right. the, play, the, 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 uh, the health system and the region sells itself. Yeah. Let's go back to February. Um, this is when things, when did your COVID antennae as a physician and as an administrator, as you will, begin to start going, okay, something's coming down the pike that we're going to have to address. Uh, January, February is when it kind of started we, coming around. Walk me through that, Doc. Yeah, we, we had started our COVID tracking process really early on in the middle of last winter when it was all isolated to China still. So we had a work group that was um, following it. No one could expect that it was going to have the presence in the United States at that time that it ultimately had, but we had started um, that, that process. Um, and then ultimately when it became clear that it was going to affect our region and we had some cases in Seattle, we very quickly stood up our hospital incident command system so that we could prepare to, to deal with this in our valley. And what, have you, what are you hearing from others uh, in your profession as a chief medical officer in other, uh, in other medical clinics and hospitals? in the Pacific Northwest. Are you guys comparing notes? What, how's that working? We do compare notes and, and one of the great things about the, the Northwest is there's a very collaborative spirit. spirit. So um, we interact regularly with the University of Washington and, and several of our physicians have contacts over there. Um, and for a while in the early part of the pandemic, um, chief medical officers from many major healthcare organizations throughout Washington State were speaking regularly so we could share notes, share best practices, um, and make sure we we're um, really trying to be consistent as much as possible throughout the state in our, in our response. The latest numbers from the Chelan Douglas Health District are sobering, uh, 240 cases per 100,000 trending in the wrong direction, 29 deaths from COVID-19 since the pandemic began in March. Again, this is just in the Chelan Douglas area. There are people who are saying, I'm doing everything I'm told to do. I'm doing the social distancing, I'm washing my hands, I'm masking up, and yet we can't seem to, to, to stop the tide. What do you, what's your message to those people who say, I don't get it, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, and we're still, we're still dealing with this? To, to those people that are doing all of those things, they're wearing their masks regularly, they're social distancing, they're washing their hands, to those people I say, thank you, you're, you're doing your part. Um, and by and large, those are not the people that are that are getting COVID. It's it's uh, it's those of us in the community that maybe aren't doing those things as religiously as we should. Um, so, 
it's really to those people that I want to speak to to say, do those things. Um, make sure you wear a mask. Um, these masks do really stop these droplets and this virus from spreading through the air. Um, and they really do protect not just us, but those around us. Um, and really probably the most important thing that we can do. Is this going to be one of those things? Is it going to just run its course? Or are we going to have to deal with it in a, in, in a year or so? Or are we going to have to deal with this for an extended period of time? What do, you, what do you think? I think we're going to deal with this at least into the middle part of next year. Um, uh, I think we need to get a virus uh, or we need to get a vaccine. That vaccine needs to be safe and it needs to be effective. Um, and then we actually have to get people to to take the vaccine, and that's going to be a, a process that probably lasts well into next year um, before all that happens. So I think we're going to I think we're going to be wearing masks. I think we're going to be socially distancing for a while. And I understand that it gets frustrating, and people get tired of taking those precautions. And we really want to get back to the way life was before this. Um, but I do think we're in this for the long haul. We still have a ways to go before uh, we can all feel safe and protected. People still have medical issues that need to be addressed. People still need to see their primary care physician on a regular basis. They still need surgeries when it is called for. How is this affecting the day-to-day -day operations at both the, the clinic on 9th Street and at Central Washington Hospital? How, how are you going about your daily routine with all of this going on? Thus far, we've been able to, to balance um, providing the care we need to uh, for the COVID patients as well as um, provide care to all of those other patients that, that need to have their chronic conditions taken care of. Um, the challenge becomes um, if COVID, if the COVID levels in our community do increase, um, that puts more stress on our hospital system and our staff. And um, we're experiencing at Confluence Health something that many other healthcare organizations throughout the state and throughout the country are, are experiencing, and that is staff shortages. Um, there are not enough nurses to go around. There are not enough medical assistants to go around. Um, there are people in the, that do uh, work in the lab that, that we're short of those. And as our um, COVID levels rise, it becomes increasingly difficult to have staff to take care of those. Um, when we get into those situations, then sometimes we're left with no alternative um, but to take some of the nurses that work in the outpatient clinics or in or doing elective surgeries and and redeploy those in nurses into the hospital to help take care of the COVID patients. And when we get in that situation, sometimes we may have to dial down some of the care that we deliver um, outside of the hospital. Um, and that's where the community can really help us. The more we can mask and the more we can socially distance, um, the the fewer patients we can keep in the hospital. Um, and it allows us to continue providing all the care that we deliver and not just the COVID care that we deliver. Do you have a quote unquote COVID wing at the hospital? How does that, how does that work um, for those people who are hospitalized with COVID at Central Washington Hospital? Yeah, that's exactly right. We have a COVID cohort that we call. So it's a, it's a um, kind of a unit that has um, temporary walls on each side of it. And there are certain um, protective equipment that you have to have when you go into that, that cohort. Um, but we found a lot of synergy by grouping all of those patients together. And honestly, it's probably safer for the staff and safer for the other patients in the hospital just to have these um, isolated in one area. What is, if you are hospitalized with COVID, how does the treatment work? Is it everybody's different? Like everybody's different because we all have our own earthly bodies, but is there a general, this is how we're going to treat you now that you have been hospitalized with this virus? Yeah, there are. It's a little bit of both. Um, so there are some some specific treatment guidelines for um, antiviral medicines like remdesivir that you may have heard about, um, or the the steroid medications that we give to decrease the inflammatory response. There are specific guidelines as to which patients should get those. Um, so when someone's admitted with COVID, we do a full assessment of them um, and see if they match up to those guidelines. Um, and if they do, and they're appropriate to receive those medicines, um, then, then we provide those. Um, you make the rounds, you see uh, your fellow physicians every day, you see administrators, you see patients. How's, how's morale? How's morale in the organization? Morale, quite honestly, it waxes and wanes. Um, you know, in the very first part of this COVID crisis, there was um, a real esprit de corps. You know, we're all in this together. Everyone's pitching in uh, to help. Um, the longer we get into this, seven, eight, nine months, 
um, people have been working really, really hard um, and really long hours. Um, and like I mentioned, we are short staff, so people get tired. Um, and, and with that tiredness, morale waxes and, and wanes a little bit. But I can't, um, I can't appreciate enough the staff in our organization, the hard work they do on a day in and day out basis. Um, and when they're called to do extra shifts, they step up and do it. And when they're asked to take care of an extra patient, they do it. Um, and that type of dedication, even if it results in exhaustion and fatigue, um, our staff step up and do it, and I'm really uh, appreciative of, of them. I had your predecessor, Stu Freed, on this show uh, in the summer, I think it was May or June, and he, the, the one thing that he stressed to me, <clears throat> he was extremely concerned about it, Doc, is that he was afraid with what was going on that people who have a health condition, either they know about it or they don't, aren't addressing that because of what's going on with COVID. They have something that needs to be checked. They, they have high blood pressure and they don't know about it because they're not doing what they should be doing as a proactive patient to see their primary health care physician to, 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 because they're scared. They're scared of, of going to the doctor or whatever. Is this, uh, that was a concern of Stu's. Is yeah. this still going on? Are, you, are people putting off medical procedures that they really shouldn't be? I think early on in this pandemic, they certainly were. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful now that, uh, that everyone's really comfortable coming into our facilities. We have very thorough processes to keep everyone safe. Everyone coming into our facilities is masked. We have very um, rigorous cleaning um, procedures. So I think people are, are comfortable now and we want them to be comfortable because we don't want people to delay care um, that they need and, and their health problems could get worse because they're not getting the care that they need. So we want people to come in for their blood pressure or for their diabetes or if they're having um, heart issues, don't delay that, don't delay that care um, because it's possible that it'll get worse and, and I want them to feel very comfortable and safe coming into our facilities. One last question about the facilities and we're gonna talk real quickly about uh, co colorectal cancer, which is, uh, he's a gastroenterologist, the good doctor is by trade. Just for people who just want to visit the newborn baby or, you know, Uncle Bob had so shoulder surgery, he's going to be in the hospital for a couple of days. How does that, how does that work or is it working? It is working. We, we are restricting visitors, um, but we do screen all the visitors um, to make sure that they don't have symptoms and they don't have a fever and they wear a mask and, and they get a little visitor sticker um, so that we can keep track of, of who's in each room and who's in the, in the hospital. Um, but they can, they can visit for a period of time. Um, we really didn't allow visitors at all into the facilities, but we've relaxed that a little bit. Um, still restricted, but, um, but we do have an open visitor policy. One last question for the good doctor here. Again, Dr. Jason Lake is the new chief medical officer for uh, Confluence Health. You're a gastroenterologist by trade, and uh, last week the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force came out with a recommendation. We've been hearing this forever. When you're 50, go get your colon checked, get your guts checked. 50 is the magic number, go get your colonoscopy. Now they're saying 45. They're seeing an increase in, in younger people uh, being diagnosed with colorectal cancer, cancer. Uh, even people in their 20s and 30s. Chadwick Bozeman from Black Panther dies of colon cancer and he's only 43. Um, probably a, your reaction to that. Yeah, so I think you're exactly right. Um, colon cancer screening saves lives. There's no question about it. We can, if it's done via a colonoscopy, we can identify precancerous polyps and remove those and take away the chance that those turn into colon cancer in the future. If we do the FIT test, which is a very sensitive test to look for blood in the stool, we can identify larger polyps or cancers earlier than we would have otherwise. Um, and we can prevent those from from killing people. Um, and those have been very effective, effective. And we've seen colon cancer rates for those above 50 decline, but exactly as you said, um, colon cancer rates in younger people are, uh, are increasing. Um, so I was happy to see those guidelines come out because I think it's the appropriate thing to do. Um, I think we need to wait a little bit for the insurance companies to adopt these uh, recommendations and to start um, paying for colonoscopies earlier. Um, before we can say we should universally adopt those, but I think that that's definitely a move in the right direction. I've seen the ads, you've seen the ads, defecate in a bag and mail it to this address and we'll send you back a test results. Anything, anything to that? I mean, that's not the same as going to a doctor, is it? Well, you know, some of those tests are showing promise. So, okay. so, so the most popular test there is Cologuard and it, it tests for a combination of blood in the stool, but there's also, it tests for DNA 
um, cancer DNA, essentially, that could show up in the stool. Um, and I think there will be promise to those. Um, over time, we don't know how frequently you should do those. Um, we don't know how the cost effect balances out between that and a colonoscopy, because a colonoscopy you only need to get done every 10 years if you don't have any polyps. Um, so I think we have to wait for a little more information, but I think those are showing promise. Okay, good. I'm always leery about seeing those on, on yeah. TV. It's like, go to your doctor. They, he knows your body as good as you do. Well, Jason, I'm going to cut you loose real quick. Uh, do you have any message as the chief medical officer in, in, uh, for Confluence South that you want to send out to our viewers and the people of North Central Washington, I'll let you have the final word, Dr. Lake. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And I do want to say that we, uh, this past Monday on November 2nd, we had the opportunity to open an emergency room down, at our, uh, down in our mayor's building at our clinic location. Um, and that's a full spectrum emergency room. So um, we've noticed over time that the emergency room at Central Washington Hospital was getting overcrowded and there were wait times. Um, and I don't think we were serving the needs of the community. So we thought it would be beneficial to open up a second ER location. Um, so I just want to let people know if they have emergency problems, feel free to go down to that other emergency room. We still do have a walk-in clinic um, in the mayor's building. We move that to the east side of the building. Um, so now if you have an issue, you have an option of an, of an ER or a walk-in clinic, but uh, we're happy and proud to be able to open that uh, facility this week. Dr. Jason Lake is the new CMO, <coughs> Chief Medical Officer of Confluence Health. And I wanna wish you the best of luck as we move forward in this age of COVID. And anytime you have uh, anything that develops and you wanna get the word out, uh, I'm, I'm told that some people actually watch the show. So you can come <laughs> on and, and do that. All right, Doc? Happy, happy to do it. Hopefully it's good we'll to see you. Uh, right. And you watch Wake Up at Anchee Valley. We'll be right back. Hey folks, Gary from Blueberry Hills. Looking for great food that's also an experience? Come on out to Blueberry Hills in Manson. Open year round and named one of the top four restaurants in the state worth the drive for breakfast by the Seattle Times. Serving down home scratch country cooking with huge portions at family friendly prices. Great food and a fun experience for the whole family and definitely worth the drive. For more information, check our website at wildaboutberries.com. At Harvest Valley Pest Control, we know you are committed to making your home and business a healthy and pest-free place. Hi, I'm David. Give us a call and we'll give you a firm price over the phone and schedule a time that works for you. We will do an in-depth 30-point healthy home or business inspection and craft a customized plan of action designed specifically for your pest issue. Give us a call or visit our website today. Is search engine optimization right for my business? Maybe. Studies show the first and second search results get 50% of all the clicks. But you have to fight national chains to get there. If the user has to scroll down to find you, tough luck. You could hide a dead body on page two and the whole zombie apocalypse on page three. Or you could spend less and get an ad in the Impact Big Print phone book, giving local businesses a chance to shine. Impact directories. Bigger print, better book. In a world of uncertainty, public transit remains a safe and effective way to travel. Throughout the day, Link staff members clean and sanitize buses between routes. In addition, all our drivers and staff members are wearing masks, and we ask that all riders do too. While riding Link Transit, we ask that you observe social distancing guidelines whenever possible. Ride smart, stay safe, and be healthy. Link Transit, caring for our communities. back it's chilly it's only 23 degrees outside of our studios and even though we have bountiful sunshine right now it's going to change from the national weather service one more look at your forecast what we're looking at today and again uh, thickening clouds as we roll through this monday snow level is going to be about 1500 feet but there's no precipitation in the forecast for today we'll top off at 43 slight chance of a little bit of light snow on the valley floor i wouldn't bet on it whatever we're going to get Ain't gonna last very long. Now the Spokane area, they're gonna get more snow than us. So there's a possibility of a bit of a dicey commute on Tuesday morning. I wouldn't bet on it. Uh, the mountain passes, by the way, are gonna get three to five inches of snow tonight and a lot of snow on Friday. We will be fairly dry. That's it for us. Have a great Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care, bye-bye.